Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host is John Troyer, and we're in San Diego for KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019, our fourth year of covering this show, over 12,000 in attendance. Such growth in the ecosystem, lots of different projects to talk about, not just Kubernetes, but joining us, first time on the program, long time watcher, Webb Brown, who's the co-founder of KubeCost, yet another project uh, here in, in the uh, e ecosystem. So, That's exactly right. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so uh, one, as a, you know, when, every time we get a founder on is, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and give us that why yeah. of what led to uh, the creation of KubeCost. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our founding team all worked in infrastructure monitoring at Google for a long time. And you know, working in container orchestration environments, uh, we saw this challenge where teams that were moving to Kubernetes uh, were finding themselves, uh, finding it easy to let costs kind of get away from them. Um, there are a lot of moving parts that weren't there before. There's a lot of dynamic aspects that are hard to just really get your, your arms around. Um, and we found ourselves just really pulled towards helping teams you know, solve those problems. Um, so yeah, that was a little over a year ago today when we made the plunge and, and here we are. Yeah, uh, you know, we remember the days when you know, public cloud was supposed to be simple and inexpensive <laughs> and we found out uh, that maybe it's neither of those things necessarily. Um, you know, let, let's click in a little bit as to you know, containers, Kubernetes. What's different about this than everything else we've been doing in public cloud uh, for the last you know, 10 plus years? Yeah, yeah. So, so we believe in, in like its ideal state, it still has the, the ability to be exactly those things, right? Simple and, and much more affordable. Uh, but we think that there's like tools and, and elements of this that create risk to the contrary. Um, and we think kind of, you know, there's three things that are different here. Uh, first is that you now have access to these incredibly powerful abstractions that are available at global scale that give you access to these really expensive resources, right? And mistakes can be costly there. Uh, two is you're seeing this like move towards decentralized deployments where you're now having individual product or application engineering teams managing their own applications, even provisioning their own infrastructure, and it's a lot higher velocity, a lot higher like dynamic environments. And then three is just, uh, it's much har harder to have visibility when you're in these multi-tenant environments, right? You know, you can now have many teams, many even departments shipping on a single VM or a, a, a small set of VMs. All right, if, if you could just give us the kind of bumper sticker, sticker on the project itself, how long has it been around, uh, it's available on GitHub I see, yeah. and how many people are using it, growth, things like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So we started the project about a year ago. Um, the, the GitHub project specifically is for doing cross-cloud cost allocation. Um, there's a lot of challenges for like measuring the cost of say CPU, RAM, storage, et cetera, when you talk about having you know, spot instances in US Central on AWS versus you know, committed use in you know, US Central on GCP. So this project helps develop a uniform standard and library to measure costs across all these different environments. Um, Hundreds of teams are using it today. Uh, we have integrations with Azure, GCP, AWS, and we also support on-prem Kubernetes clusters. Now, kind of a minor detail, Web, but I mean, those costs change week over week as uh, announcements happen, as instances yeah. go up and down. I mean, yeah. how, how does the project and the community come together to, to even track all that? Yeah, no, we know it well. I mean, we're living and breathing and seeing exactly that. Um, and, and that speaks to, you know, really the complexity here. Um, and, and the project is designed to support exactly that. So, constantly refreshing billing data, uh, dynamically looking at when pods or jobs are coming up and going down, and in real time look at the cost of the nodes that they're actually running on. Um, that is both the beauty and the challenge that we face is things can change so quickly, and oftentimes that's for the better, but it's also a challenge to just stay on top of all this change that's happening. Well, does, does the community help assemble that data? Are there AP, I mean, does that, I don't think there's, a, cost APIs for every cloud, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Right? So we, ha we do have uh, billing API integrations okay. for these three cloud providers. So like I mentioned, AWS, gotcha. Azure, GCP. Uh, the community has been instrumental in finding 
all these edge cases, right? So like, you know, GPUs in this environment versus you know, storage in this environment, and, and that's, it's really this long tail of complexity that's really hard for getting this right, and the ecosystem has been absolutely you know, key to finding all those like, nooks and crannies to get this just right. Okay, just finishing that, that, that thought on, on the, the billing, you've got billing APIs in the public cloud, but on the on-premises environment, uh, your mileage may vary, I'm assuming. Yeah. How, how does that fit into the equation? Yeah, you can, you can think about it as kind of bring your own pricing sheet, right? So like, we want to support your environment, and that could be you care about you know, just the price of CPU, memory, storage, GPUs, et cetera, but it could also be you, know, you have some centralized ops teams that you want to allocate or like amortize the cost of across all of your tenants in that cluster. So we want to meet you where you are and give you full custom, you know, like inputs to tailor this to your environment. Okay, so we've talked about the project. Uh, there's also a company uh, yes. associated yeah. with us. Help us uh, understand the relationship, the size of the team, uh, kind of the business strategy there. Yeah, absolutely. So we have an open core model where our commercial product is built on top of this open source library. You can think about it providing a lot of the, the UI and enterprise management functionality, things like you know, multi-cloud view, uh, long-term durable storage, SAML integrations, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, we're a small team of, of engineers right now. Um, you know, all engineers, so we're living and breathing the like actual you know, writing go, you know, writing code every day. Well, we're a lot of, we live in a world, uh, we're maybe, I don't know if we're post DevOps yet, but there's a lot of DevOps here at this show. You, we've got many flavors of DevOps, DevSecOps. Yes. I mean, is this, who is, who, and I'm, where I'm going is, is there a dev cost ops? Do, do developers now have to be worrying about the cost of what they're doing? Who, who is paying attention to the, to the, uh, the, the, the cash register that at the top of the kube cost yeah, uh, yeah. stack? Yeah, I, I think it's very similar to what you just said is, all of this is in flux, right? And there's so many different models uh, that, are, that are working and are, are, are constantly evolving. Um, what we typically see is it's uh, someone from the finance org and someone from the DevOps org that is jointly caring about this, this picture. Um, so, you know, we have opinions on, on how this can work really well, but we also love to just let the industry and, you know, and different enterprises guide us and, and kind of meet them where they are. Um, but, but we think that this is going to be continuing to evolve and change for the years to come, just because yeah. so much is, is it, it, It's such a big challenge. I've talked to some large enterprises that they assign engineering resources to do the financial yeah. engineering yeah. thing, yeah. and it, it seems that number one is the, the cloud providers should be able to put, put some you know, pieces in place. Secondly, you know, automation and intelligence of you know, that this entire ecosystem yeah. should be able to help there. Is that, is that really where you, your, your team and your project is focusing to, you know, to take, I don't want that, you know, you should be building new apps and helping my business, not sitting there watching the meters and saying, oh wait, I need to go yeah, turn yeah. some knobs. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think the first part of what you mentioned is, is very relevant and, and was kind of the, the kicker that really pushed us over the edge to start this project, start this company is, we saw teams that were building their own internal solutions or doing all this ad hoc analysis and oh by the way, pretty much every team we talked to was doing it differently. Uh, so that was what, what our real inspiration to say, okay, we have to do this. Um, we absolutely see an evolution to just more and more automation and intelligence, but you have to think about cost is not an isolated variable. Cost is very closely linked to reliability and performance, stability, all these things. So you want to be really thoughtful and really careful when you start handing this stuff over to an algorithm, right? Because it can mean you know, performance regressions, it can mean downtime. So we, you know, we absolutely see the industry evolving there. Um, we see a lot of teams that, that in our view are like, are rightfully cautious before kind of handing over the keys uh, to, to an algorithm or set of algorithms that are going to really dial the lever for them on you know, the right amount of, say, memory, compute, et cetera. I imagine there's also the trade-offs between uh, engineering resources and costs, right? I could do it the, 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 the fast way with one engineer and, yeah. it, and it might have one cost implication. I might, uh, sure, I could get my cloud costs down, but it might have taken me you know, 10 engineer months yeah. to do. Yeah. So there's all, I mean, I, I, it's interesting, is there a conversation in the, like let's use the community in the broader sense about how to do this kind of capacity management and trade-offs, is there an emerging, you know, it's hard in the OSS world if there's not a project around that you can gather around. Yeah. How do you have a conversation around 
you know, costs and engineering trade-offs. Yeah. yeah, I think we're still really early here. And I think there's still huge opportunity. Um, and and I, we just feel that it's, it's incredibly challenging. If you just look at the engineering side, you know, there's so much uncertainty to go in and say, what's it going to take to move us from you know, on-demand to spot? Or move us from one region to the other, or one provider to the other? Um, that it's really hard to really put an expected cost on that and do an appropriate ROI. Um, what we've seen that uh, a lot of teams are able to really easily identify the low hanging fruit where there's a very clear ROI, but these like you know, marginal decisions absolutely think there's uh, more frameworks and more tools that can help teams make those decisions well. All right, so what Love to get your personal viewpoint as you're working for a startup, you're here in this massive ecosystem. T -t 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 Tell us about that kind of environment, how it is in the, this cloud native ecosystem, and uh, you know, any specific things around you know, the event itself are welcome to. Yeah, um, so you know, we're coming from Google and a lot of our exposure to bigger conferences was you know, things, things like Google I.O. And, and Google specific events. Um, and, and those are amazing to have their own, you know, ecosystem and kind of atmosphere, but, but I've never felt energy like this. I've, I've never seen just so many things that are new, so many things that are changing all at once, um, that it's just, it's impossible to not get here and be excited by this stuff, right? Of like, um, you know, a lot of us have ideas how things were evolved, but I, I definitely can't claim to like, you know, have really any real conviction around how this broader ecosystem will evolve. And, and that just adds to the excitement of so many things are improving and evolving all at the same time. Yeah, do, do you feel a small company like yourself can get attention with everything that's going on here? Yeah, I mean, what we want to do is, we want to be the very best at cost and capacity. And, and, and while that touches on many things, that's a really small area. So, you know, our, our approach is, we're not going to be everything. And, and while that can be hard at times, um, we think that's right for a small team. And, and that's my general advice to anybody that comes to this eco is, is find a real problem uh, and be comfortable not being everything for everybody, but go and solve that for a, a set of users and, and do it the best. All right, uh, if you could just give you the final word here, what should we be looking for from, from Cubecost uh, kind of over the next year? Yeah, I, I think just uh, you know, really getting going deeper and broader in cost and capacity management. That's bringing our tools to more platforms, you know, more users, uh, more intelligence and, and automation over time, but just continue to improve visibility to make this easier and easier for teams to make these appropriate trade-offs where they invest engineering resources and how they optimize costs. All right, well, Web Brown, thanks so much for joining us. Thank we are welcome you. to welcome, uh, we're glad to welcome CubeCost to theCUBE alumni. Thank you so, so much. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Check out thecube.net for all the coverage. Uh, we've been four years at this event uh, in the US, we've also done the European shows, and uh, so much more coming. Three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thanks for watching theCUBE.